What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Retro Rebound Podcast. My name is Johnny Vicious, and I also have my co-host Morgan with me. Say hello, Morgan. Hello. Yeah, and we have a, a very special guest on uh, this week's podcast. We have the one and only Mike Pollock. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Yes. He is the voice of Dr. Eggman, mostly known for. Um, we have a couple of questions for Mr. Pollock here. Uh, I will kick it off. Uh, first question I want to ask is, uh, how did you actually get into voice acting? I started uh, growing up loving radio, uh, both uh, what was then the current radio and back in the 1970s, and old-time radio dating back to the 1940s, and loved how people could create pictures in the mind just by using their voices, and knew that that was something that I wanted to do. So I eventually grew up, theoretically, uh, got into radio <laughs> and realized what I really loved about radio after doing various disc jockey shifts was doing the crazy characters in commercials. So when radio took a turn for the worse, I put together a demo reel of all of my various character work and uh, shipped it off to a couple of producers. One of them was Pokemon, and one of them was an anime uh, company, and started booking voiceover work. And that was how that all started. So so back back in the day when, when you heard it on the radio, um, did you used to join in with them, like, on the radio? Eh, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Mostly I was... <laughs> I was uh, listening intently and, and uh, occasionally practicing, I guess. Yeah. But I just figured uh, through various uh, stage work stuff that I was doing in school that I could do wacky accents and characters. And then realized the efficiency of voiceover work for being able to cram several jobs into a day worked perfect for my short attention. <laughs> so, uh, Morgan, do you have your first question? Yes, my first question is going from... Uh, like doing radio work and then moving on to uh, things such as video games and shows and movies where you develop a larger character that sticks around longer and develops their own personality. Um, what is the biggest difference between um, TV and video games? Uh, the biggest difference is the way the uh, storyline works out. In TV, there tends to be a fairly linear storyline with a, be a beginning, middle, and end. Games just jump around more. And in addition to what storyline there may be, there are also just reacts and various assorted grunts and repetitive phrases that make up what video games have come to be known for. So it's it's a much less linear feel to it in most cases. Do, do you enjoy it more or less? I love working at all. The fact that someone is willing to pay me for essentially reading aloud is a spectacular thing, and that never gets old. Um, I enjoy being able to work with other people, which, which depending on the on the type of recording, um, sometimes a TV show will provide more of. But whether I'm working all by myself with just a producer and a director across the glass doing a video game, or doing a TV show with a bunch of people in a room, or at least across the internet, either one is just as much fun because I'm getting to do what I love. I, I've always I've always thought of uh, voice acting as, as like a it's a weird concept for a job. Um, being having a job where you can just talk into a microphone and it just it that that's your job. It's it, yeah. it, essentially, but yeah. it, it it takes a certain amount of skill. Unfortunately, I apparently have enough of the skills that people want to yeah. make it uh, worth hiring me for. Yeah. Um, my my second question is um, so obviously. Listening to the radio as a as a as a young person, uh, you got a bit of inspiration uh, for becoming like having a job in radio. And um, did after that, did you aspire to just be a voice actor, or did you want to be like an actual, like a movie actor? I consider an actor as an actor. I happen to specialize in voice, but if yeah. somebody really wanted me to be in an on-camera thing. I wouldn't necessarily seek it out. I'd be I'd be happy to do it if they if they thought they wanted me. Uh, but I'm an actor. I've done stage work. I've done a little on camera work. But voice acting for me, the the lack of wardrobe, the lack of of uh, makeup, the lack of line memorization is a spectacularly wonderful way to work for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is just a side question. Um, would you would you ever appear or think about doing a live action version of a Sonic Boom episode? I would be happy to audition. I would love to be given the chance to audition. Yeah. It's not 
not really up to me. It's up to the producer. Yeah. So if the producer thinks I can handle it, then sure. But <laughs> I would, I would appreciate the courtesy of an audition since that's the way I work anyway. Yeah. Morgan, your next question. For, uh, you've worked on so many uh, shows and so many video games. I was wondering, uh, who's the f your favorite character on a project that you worked on that you didn't voice? Um, I was very impressed with uh, the voice of Bokun on Sonic X, just because the delightfully annoying way that TV's Andrew Reynolds was able to bring life to that. Uh, and uh, it amazed me that he could do it without hurting himself. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I've, I heard that that voice that he does, th there is no, no like audio tricks to that. That is his genuine voice. To, I'd like, have to, to talk. double. I'd have to double check that because listening back to one of the episodes because my children occasionally find it on demand and watch it yeah. it might have been pitched up a little bit yeah. but I'm sure that the bulk of it was him yeah um, right uh, my next question is uh, were you aware of the Sonic band fan, uh, were you aware of the Sonic fan base and uh, aware of their antics prior to the Eggman rule uh, not specifically again I'm I'm hired because I'm an actor yeah. Nowhere in the specs for the role did it say must be a gamer and must be a fan of this video game. Yeah. <laughs> the qualifications are you got to be able to read without sounding like you're reading and make it sound fairly natural. So they hire actors. They don't necessarily hire game fans. So no, I I learned it was very much on the job training uh, as uh, social media developed and the the Sonic fan base became more present thereon. Yeah. Realize the intricacies. <laughs> yeah, the they they are a, a unique bunch of people. Um, They're very that? devoted. Yes, <laughs> um, me me being one of them, but no, I'm not as hardcore as some of them. <laughs> um, Morgan, your next question. From, it, it, yeah, sorry, after you entered the voice acting career. How often, or often at all, do you see um, a show, movie, video game that you want to voice act, that you wish you could be a part of? I want to be a part of everything. I love working. I mean, ideally, I'd like to have some big theatrical thing or some big primetime show, but as an actor, you can't, you never know where your next paycheck is coming from, so it doesn't make any sense to be picky. <laughs> as long as a project is not terribly vile and vulgar and offensive uh yes please <laughs> uh my my next question is um before you actually came to the to the actual voice of eggman uh, did you have any other styles of voice for eggman before you found or the producer said that's the one they gave me samples of Dean Bristow to match, so I was working on my Dean Bristow impression, which is essentially, rah, 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 I'm Dean Bristow, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> and I went in for three rounds of uh, callbacks with that until they were finally convinced that that was the Dean Bristow sound alike that they wanted. Mm. And then after the first few episodes of Sonic X, we realized that we have a little more comedy than we expected, and uh, the production team and I figured out that a few more peaks and valleys in the voice a la Martin Short's Jiminy Glick character, where he starts up way up high and then goes way down low. Would be a more interesting approach. So I've carried that through. Something that I've actually been quite interested in is I noticed that some of your characters that you play have very similar voices to your own. And the, just to say, they're, they're just as impressive. Um, but do you feel more or less comfortable being a character using a voice that's similar to your own? Depends on the project. Uh, one of the, the ones that comes to mind where that was actually requested was uh, Langston Lickitoad in Viva Pinata. And when the lovely and talented Eric Stewart, who was directing first, brought this idea to me and said, maybe it sounds just like you. I said, <laughs> really? But that's what he wanted. Um, so again, I'm, I'm, my job is to please the client, please the producer, otherwise I pretty much can't leave the room until they're satisfied. So Langston Ligatoad sounding very much like at least one of my normal voices uh, was a bit of a shock to get used to, but after the first couple episodes, I got the hang of it and it became a little better. 
But again, a lot of the commercial stuff I do where it's just a straight announce reread or a straight narration, it's pretty much my voice. So depends on the role. Okay. Just as I said earlier, they're just as impressive because you can tell that you put just as much effort into those characters as you do, such as Meat from Ultimate Muscle, where it's not a voice that <laughs> comes from most people, but it's just it's enjoyable, and you can tell that it has effort into it. Thank you. I'm, I'm, when people hire me, they expect to have the job done the way they want it, so I make sure that I give it at least 100%, if not more. It, it can tell. You can tell from uh, from the voice acting. Thank you. Um, I wanted to know, um, how much time do you actually, once you once you send off for an audition and you, and you get the job, how much time do you actually invest in uh, preparing that voice for that certain role? It uh, depends very much on the project. Uh, in some cases, on the commercial, uh, the audition will take about five minutes. I might get. I usually will get to a studio about ten minutes earlier. Get to look over the script, figure out some voices in my head, and in the room, it's a very much rapid fire. Okay, try it like this. Maybe a little deeper. Maybe a little higher. A little faster. Let's uh, let's uh, make some accents. Let's make something happen. And uh, then I leave the room. And if if I'm lucky, I'm the one they like. But there are usually a couple dozen other people behind me that are uh, also competing for the job. Um, so it's it's usually a fairly quick process. Yeah. Uh, we have some uh, fan questions uh, from Twitter. Excellent. Uh, that, that we would like to ask. Um, this comes from at cyber underscore thumbs. He asks... Uh, are there any interesting or funny quotes confined to the cutting room floor? There are tons of things. I am, my philosophy uh, is own your outtakes. I'm having fun when I'm in the room, and if something is going horribly wrong and horribly off track, I will have fun with it and start bursting into show tunes or wacky voices just because I'm having so much fun. There are a couple places uh, uh, where you can hear some outtakes. Some of my early Raname works have some outtakes on them. Also on my SoundCloud channel at It's a Mic uh, on SoundCloud, there is a, a couple of a, a, a lovely outtake montage from what was otherwise a fairly boring narration job on uh, Lone Factory. Oh. But I did so many of them, and there ended up being so many outtakes that they assembled them into a rather amusing little package. <laughs> Uh, we we will link that in the description below, so you can go sure. and check out that. Um, we also have a question from at underscore Delta Flyer. He asks, "Did you think you'll be playing such an iconic character for so long? Uh, and which name do you before prefer, Robotnik or Eggman?" As an actor, you never know how long a, a gig is going to last. Commercial recordings, for example, last as long as a one as a single session. So I've done a commercial in five minutes, and that was the end of that job. Um, with uh, Sonic, I'm delighted that not only was I booked originally for Sonic X in 2003 and the various video games that followed, but when they recast the series, they were kind enough to ask me to re-audition. I did exactly the same thing I had done before, and they decided that's what they wanted again. So here we are again, and that's spectacular. Um, but it's not something that's predict predictable, and I'm delighted to have uh, any opportunity to do any kind of type of job, and the ones that run longer than others are, just means uh, that much fewer auditions that I have to deal with. Yeah. And my scripts have always said Eggman, so that's what the script said. That's good enough, for, uh, good enough for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have uh, one more, one more question, and it's probably one of the most burning questions anyone is ever going to ask you, Mike. It is. You should see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is going to leave you with third degree burns. This question: um, Who would win in a fight, Eggman or Humpty Dumpty? Uh, whoever the writers decide. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that question comes from a uh, at Gabba underscore ninja. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, this has been a this has been the retro rebound podcast. I think we're going to wrap it up there, and uh, would like to thank Mike Pollock for joining us this evening. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And uh, obviously we have Morgan here. 
you. You you did you did well, Morgan. Congratulations. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I'll Thank give a round of applause eyes. for Morgan. <laughs> I've I've got a question for you. Oh, and now oh, yes. Neil D has joined the podcast right at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've got a, a little question for you. With you having children, um, do uh, you ever get do you ever get sucked into playing their games? And if so, what's your favourite games? I don't play games because I'm not a gamer, but I do hear oh. uh, I do hear lots of their games coming from behind the back seat of the car. Uh, and that <laughs> so, they've never, get so they've never tried to make you compete and play a game because I know what kids no. are like for that. No, they're quite quite content to play their own games at full volume. In a very repetitive, tedious sort of way. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank thank you, Neil, for joining us right at the last second. There, we nearly cut you off. <laughs> um, so yeah, this has been the the Retro Rebound podcast, and uh, I'll see you later. Thanks so much. Cheers. That was good. That.